Hi friends, how are you today? Are you doing well? I hope so. We're here on my lovely couch. We're here with my cat Max. You can't see him right now, but he is here enjoying himself. I'm just sitting here, super cozy, ready to talk about my favorite movies of 2021. Yeah, we're doing it on this couch. Comfy, cozy, got my water, got Max, got my laptop ready to go. And we're just gonna get into it because I watched a good amount of movies in 2021. Not the most that I've watched in a year. And honestly, I didn't get to watch all of the movies that I had been anticipating for 2021, but that's okay. If I do get to watch those movies, I will let you know, of course, what I think of them and if they would have been included in my top 10. But this is just a list that I made with the movies that I already did watch. And there's one movie called The Power of the Dog that is not on this list, but I watched it a couple days ago and I really loved it. And if I had written the script a couple days ago when I watched that movie, that movie would definitely be in the top 10. So just keep that in mind. If you haven't watched The Power of the Dog, it's a powerful story. So without further ado, let's get into the top 10 movies that I watched in 2021. Also, disclaimer, of course, this is not the best movies of 2021. These are just the, my favorite movies of 2021. Personally, I love these movies. I could rewatch them all the time and I just really enjoyed them. So the movie taking the number 10 spot is indeed a musical. We had so many great musicals this year, such as Tick Tick Boom, Encanto, Annette, and In the Heights. The number one movie that made the most impact for me of last year was Steven Spielberg's remake of the classic 1961 movie, A West Side Story. If you don't know anything about this movie, it is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet, but it's set in New York and uses rival gangs as a clashing conflict. This movie was amazing to see on the big screen, from the camera work, to the choreography, to the music, of course. This truly made me feel like I was so lucky to be in the theaters to actually watch such a film unfold like that. And Steven Spielberg definitely still has it in him. All right, the next movie in the number nine spot is Spencer. This film is a very subtle, unconventional film about the life of Princess Diana. It is not a biopic, but it is somewhat of a reimagining of her life, and it was very uncomfortable. It was extremely unsettling, but very, very stunning. I think the cinematographer Claire Mathon, Mathon I don't know how to say her last name, is one of the most um, creative cinematographers we have out there right now. She has such a clear vision for what she wants to achieve and of course Kristen Stewart did an amazing job. She was absolutely stunning and this is probably one of her best performances I've ever seen from her other than Twilight of course. Alright so the number eight spot. I'm giving this spot to a little Studio Ghibli-esque movie. Um, this film is from a very underrated, low-budget indie production company called Pixar, if you've heard of that. Luca is about a young sea monster boy who meets another sea monster boy, and they have fun as humans in a small town in Italy. I mean, doesn't that just sound fun to you? Like. I think the premise of this story is amazing. It was such a delight to watch and the characters were super cute. The story was cute and all the food in the movie was adorable. Um, the music was amazing and honestly, it just became one of my comfort films for 2021. Uh, it really made me feel like a child again rewatching it. And the number seven spot for my list is Shiva Baby. I already talked about this a lot in my other videos, so go watch that if you haven't yet. But 
This movie is super anxiety inducing, but it's also very hilarious and very relatable. Alright, the number six spot. Some of these movies I already talked about in my other ones, so I'm not going to talk about them that much, but it is The French Dispatch. Um, I really love this movie. I don't think it's his best movie, and I don't think it's my favorite movie from Wes Anderson, but it really is such a creative project in my opinion. I think it was beautiful and the story is set up in three stories which some people don't like. I really enjoy because I love anthology type of movies. The movie is very meticulous. I applaud his ambition for trying to create three separate stories that are all compelling and all beautiful to look at and what's the point of film if you're not having fun with it and Wes Anderson definitely seemed like he had a lot of fun making this film. Alright the number five spot may be a little bit controversial I don't think this was on anyone's favorites list but it is Eternals. I just love this movie so much. I agree that there's a lot of problems with it but I just I couldn't stop thinking about it when I left the theater and Chloe Zhao is becoming one of my favorite directors of all time. Her vision is amazing and I just love her naturistic shots but the movie was just mind blowing to me. I completely loved it and I adore Chloe Zhao. The next movie in the number 4 spot for me is Dune. I really loved this movie, the giant sandworm, the, the grand scale of it all. I really loved a lot of the actors in the movies as well, even though I thought that their performances weren't the best, um, I still really appreciated them being in the story and I thought the storyline was really easy to understand as well as interesting. And I wish it was, it felt a little bit more complete, but I totally understand that he wanted to split this up into two movies because it's a lot of content in context to portray in two, three hours, so I totally understand that. And Denise Villeneuve is definitely one of my favorite directors of all time, so I'm happy to see him still making amazing sci-fi movies. Alright, we're down to our top three, and I really enjoyed all the movies that I watched this year, but these three were definitely the standouts. Um, this year in movies wasn't the best for me. I thought that we had a lot of great gems, but nothing was super insane to me. I think I'm still on that high, like most people of 2019 and maybe even 2014. Whenever Birdman and Whiplash came out that year as well as 2019 were some of the best years of movies in my opinion and trying to find that is hard again. 2020 did a really great job as well and 2021 I think was a little bit um, lacking for me but I'm hoping that 2022 can beat this year but the top three movies that I watched this year all will be probably my top 100 movies of all time so they were really great on their own. So the third movie on my list is The Duel. I know a lot of people didn't watch this movie and it had some controversy behind it but I personally really loved it. This movie is about a woman who is sexually assaulted by her husband's best friend. I don't know if it's best friend but it's a friend. It's a friendly um, acquaintance I guess, not best friend. And the whole movie goes through each person's perspective on what happened that day and I just think it was phenomenal. I loved the storytelling, I loved the acting, all the performances were amazing. I think Ridley Scott really popped off with this movie, honestly, like I didn't know he had it in him still but obviously I was wrong. I don't know anything about filmmaking because Ridley Scott really pulled through and made one of the best movies of this year. Definitely watch it if you haven't watched it yet. There's trigger warnings of course for sexual assault and um, abuse but like research that before you watch the movie. The last two films I would say are interchangeable. One of them, they're both very different but one of them I've rewatched a couple times and the other one I haven't rewatched as often just because 
um, it hasn't been coming out on streaming yet. So the movie in the second place for me is Spider-Man No Way Home. I adore this movie. I grew up with all the old Spider-Man movies and he's definitely my favorite hero because he's just a kid and he's poor and he doesn't have that much like going for him other than being Spider-Man and yet he still wants to pursue other things as well. I think that's super relatable and um, I just love that like storyline of Peter Parker. and. I remember Into the Spider-Verse was one of the most amazing films that I watched when it came out and this one was probably on the same feed as that because I was just so shocked in the theater. Um, one of the best theater experiences of my life and watching it in Dolby was everything <laughs> I've ever dreamt of but yeah if you haven't watched it please do um, mostly if you love the older spider-man movies there's a lot of nostalgia there for you and just great action sequences and a really good storyline and the last movie i'll be talking about in my first place spot is the green knight i absolutely love this fairy tale it's one of my favorite fairy tales in british folklore and um, I actually learned about this tale in one of my classes a long time ago and I just fell in love with it. And then I found out that there was a movie adaptation and it would star Dev Patel and I freaking love him so I was like, oh my god, this is everything I ever wanted. And when I was watching it, I was even more amazed by it because it was just completely original. I think the storyline was original all the props were so cool to see and the performances as well were is super amazing and i just love how different they made the movie from the actual um tale because in the tale you see this guy as courageous like he's perceived as such a courageous amazing dude but dev patel in the movie he's kind of working up to that he's still a little cowardly and you have this whole sequence of him just thinking like how what will people think of me if i don't do this task and even in the end it's very ambiguous of what happens which in the tale you already know what happens but in the movie they still leave it up to like ambiguity so those are all my favorite movies of 2021 thank you for spending time with me on my comfy couch and talking about movies because I freaking love them. If you like this video, subscribe, like, and comment down below what your favorite movie was. I'd love to know. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.